the challenge of the hour. The challenge of the hour. Every hour has its own challenge. And in your life, if you keep attentive to the Lord, you'll find that if God reckons with you, and if God has a good record of you, and He has real confidence in you, there are special hours of your life He will bring a challenge before you. Every generation has the specially appointed messengers that carry out the plan of God or the purpose of God for that generation. God has only given every human being only one generation in which to serve. No matter how long you live, that's your generation. If you do not serve well in your own generation at your own time, once you have closed your eyes in death and you have left, you have gone to heaven, you cannot come back and serve another generation. So you must be very, very watchful that this is your generation. This is your hour. And you want to serve God and your generation at this hour of need. That is why the Lord is bringing before us the challenge of the hour. I'll talk about the call, the cowards, the courageous. When the call comes before you, there are two ways to follow. Either the way of the coward or the way of the courageous. But the challenge will come. And the challenge is coming tonight as we are all here. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? That was the challenge of the hour. Isaiah had a good name and also he had been a prophet. The Lord had been using him before. This was not the day he became a worker in the Lord's vineyard. This was not the day he became a prophet in Israel. He had been a prophet for a period of time before this. And so a zonal leader had been a worker before today. Area leader, you've been serving the Lord, you've been running up and down before this day. House fellowship leaders, visitation leaders, or full time workers, <clears throat> you've been getting some work done. And so don't feel that, well, there is no challenge anymore. I've yielded my time to the Lord, I've yielded my life to the Lord, I'm already serving Him, and already I have converts, I have people who are following the Lord now through my efforts. That is nice. But you must remember that Isaiah also had had that type of ministry. He had preached. If you read chapters 1 to 5 of Isaiah, you will see the message and the vision that he had got. And he had, he had addressed the nation, sent the message to the nation. But now this time came. The Lord showed him a fresh vision. After the whole vision, and after he had confessed his weakness, his uncleanness to the Lord, the Lord now gave the call, the challenge of the hour came, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? As long as there is work to do, the voice of the Lord will be calling upon workers. Those who are deaf will not hear. Those who are not attentive will not hear. Those who are careless will not hear. But as long as there is work to do, the attentive worker, 
the one that is relying upon the Lord, he will be hearing the voice of the Lord. And the work of the Lord is still here. There is so much to do. And the Lord is not willing that any of these people should perish. So then, the work is there. The Lord's voice must be calling. If you are not hearing, it's because perhaps you are deaf. And what a tragedy if somebody is deaf. Maybe it is because you are not attentive. And what a tragedy that the Almighty God is speaking and yet you cannot hear. But if you are attentive and if you are not deaf, that Lord is saying, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? That's the challenge. In Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Israel was a nation. But a nation still on earth. A nation having enemies. Because if they were no more on earth, if they were already in heaven, there will be no need for watchman. Because there is absolute security in heaven. If there is no enemy for the Israel of God, the nation that God had set apart, if there is no enemy, there will be no watchman, no guard. <clears throat> when there are no thieves, there will be no necessity for security guards. But if there are thieves, if there are enemies, then there is a necessity for a watchman. And God spoke to Ezekiel, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. You think about it. Here we are still on the face of the earth. If the thief that comes to steal and to kill and to destroy is still operating, that is Satan, then it means God is looking for watchmen. For you to watch over the souls of people in the house fellowship. Watch over the souls of the people in the area. Or watch over the souls of the people in the zone. If the devil is there, if, the, if temptations are there, if problems are around, if there are things pulling the worshippers back, that they will not be able to worship God in spirit and in truth with all their hearts, then there is need for a watchman. And God is saying, this is a challenge. I have made you. Now, you can accept it and do it. You can reject it and not do it. But I have made you. He has given you the call. He has put you in that position. He has given you the responsibility. And it is not a type of figurehead responsibility. The work is there and you are to carry it out. I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. There are people that concern themselves. Where God has not given them responsibility. You see, at the time of Ezekiel, the children of Israel, some of them were about to be scattered out to other parts of the world. But God specifically outlined the area where he made Ezekiel a watchman. There are times you leave what God has given you to do in the house fellowship. And you are concerned about other things in the church where God has not put you. There are times a zonal leader will leave his primary assignment, his primary work, and he will get concerned with other areas where God has not put him. There are times a worker in deeper life will leave the work God has given him and he will, um, he will concern himself with maybe a village in his stage and he'll be having village meeting. And uh, you know, when the Lord is going to inspect your world, He's going to check up His record. Where did I make you a watchman? Were you a watchman there? Did you actually do it? That is the challenge of the hour. Therefore, 
Hear the word at my mouth. Give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Look up here. How many of you know that God can judge you for giving money to somebody who doesn't need money but needs warning? God sends this person to you in the house fellowship so that you as a watchman can warn him of his evil way. Maybe it's a highway robber. Maybe he's doing night business. Maybe he's doing smuggling. How many of you know that by putting your hand in your pocket, giving him money that he will use to transport himself to Semeboda to go and smuggle, how many of you know God can even judge you for giving money to somebody? Think about it. A person you should warn, a smoker, a drunkard, and while he's talking to you like this, his mouth is smelling. And you put your hand on his shoulder, you say, Oh, my brother, you are a wonderful person. How many of you know God can judge you for that? Oh, you are good. Just keep coming to us, fellowship. And then uh, he says, Well, uh, I don't have uh, money anymore. And, uh, well, uh, I want to be part of you, but I don't have money. What do you need money for? Well, many, many things. Because uh, if I don't smoke uh, every day, my stomach will be uh, making noise. If I don't drink, I will not feel well. And uh, you say, well, to encourage him so that he will keep coming. You say, okay, have uh, five naira. Don't drink too much, but have five naira. How many of you know that God can judge you for that? He has put you as a watchman to warn the people. But you know, if you don't know your responsibility, what God has given you, you leave that aside. And you will be doing what God has not sent you to do. Somebody in the house fellowship has got married uh, before, and you know it. And now he is planning to marry the second wife. Not that you don't know, you know it. Planning to marry the second wife. And uh, you say, well... Uh, I'm a house fellowship leader We are to encourage these people We are to love them And you choose uh, about uh, five people from house fellowship And uh, you say now We are going to go with him to his state uh, He wants to marry second wife But uh, don't worry uh, God will help him And then you travel with him You encourage him You do everything He brings back home the second wife You do know God can judge you for that Because this is a wicked man going astray and you are not warning him with tears warning him with your prayers warning him with the teaching of the word of God and God says if you don't he will die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at your hand his blood I will require at your hand that is a challenge yet if thou warn the wicked verse 19 and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, somebody who has been a Christian, righteous, following the Lord, now he commits iniquity. And I lay a stumbling block before him. That means maybe allow sickness to come upon him so that he can be convicted and run back to the Lord. Or maybe there is an adversity in his life so that he will become afraid and run back to the Lord. But it says, I lay a stumbling block before him, but then he didn't care. He just went on in his sin. He shall die. Because thou hast given him, thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. 
and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at thine hand. Those uh, leaders who are afraid to speak the truth, who feel, well, if we speak the truth to these people, they will run away. Therefore, uh, let them just come at the house fellowship, we clap, we sing, uh, we read their prayer request. And when you see a believer already telling lies, a believer backsliding, doing what is evil, and uh, maybe a member of the house fellowship reported to you and said, I saw this uh, man, I saw him smoking. Okay, okay, don't talk, just leave him alone. If we talk, he is a quick tempered person. He will run away. He will not come anymore. And look at our house fellowship. When they begin to run away one by one, how will the house fellowship grow? So leave him alone. I saw a uh, sister so and so and brother so and so. I met them inside uh, a room and they locked the door. Ah, don't talk. Oh. Leave them alone. The Holy Spirit is there. And then uh, maybe the so called sister came to you. And uh, you are a leader And says uh, Somebody reported me to you That uh, uh, they said they found me Inside uh, a locked room Ah sister it's not so Don't vex now We are all children of God And you refuse to speak the truth To come out and say Look the Bible says When a righteous man Leaves his righteousness And he goes to commit sin His righteousness I will not remember anymore You don't confront him with the truth Of the word of God and you're just saying, we well, sister, sister, and don't worry about it. God says he will die or she will die in his or her sin. But the blood of that sinner who perishes, I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, and the righteous man, the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is one. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Now, this is a challenge. God is giving us this challenge and is giving us this call. And he's saying, this is the work you will do. And uh, I pray that you will receive grace from the Lord to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if anybody is asleep, uh, you must uh, wake him up. If your manager called all their workers together and uh, said we're going to have a private meeting all of you who have been working for three years no promotion uh, you must be there and uh, those who have not been paid their salary for the past three months you must be there and uh, they are is trying to tell you about promotion about anything and it's already quarter to eleven and the manager is talking about promotion will you sleep uh -huh. This one is greater than money So don't sleep uh, So let us pay attention And listen to what the Lord wants to teach us Do we understand? Yes. Now I've told you about the call Let's see the cowards How the cowards behave When the call comes to them Instead of they are taking up the challenge Saying I have got the call The Lord has said Who shall I send and who shall go for us And here am I I surrender myself the Lord has said, he has made me a watchman over these people. I will do the work conscientiously. Instead of doing that, some, some people are just cowards. Cowards. And in um, Numbers chapter 13, from verse 31. Numbers chapter 13, verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They are stronger than we. We cannot warn the sinners. They are hard-hearted. These are the cowards. The Lord is making you a watchman. He's giving you a responsibility. And he's saying, This is what you are to do as a visitation leader. You are the messenger of the king. The Lord is sending you forth. And he's saying, you go to them and go and talk to them about the love of God. About the grace of God. About the possibility of being set free from sin. And about coming back to the place where God has put his name and his power. Where they can hear the word of God. And uh, you say, well, uh, the people, they are more educated than I am. 
I didn't go to school. I am an illiterate. That's what the coward say was saying. They were saying they are stronger than we are. They gave me the card of that individual. But uh, when I got to their house, I saw that they are stronger than I am. They are more intelligent than I am. They even know more Bible, but they are not saved. They know more Bible than I know. Maybe they were in Jehovah's Witness before, or they were in all these uh, other places before, where they just read Bible, but they don't understand. They are not born again. And now the card is given to you to go and visit them. The coward will say, I cannot. I am weak. I am illiterate. I am not educated. But that's the answer of the coward. In verse 32, they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Do you know there are people who are afraid to give the paper, miracle and healing news, to their boss? They'll be shaking like this. And yet, when they want to give the letter of uh, petition to their boss for promotion, that uh, I've been here for 10 years, I've not been promoted, they are not afraid. They just take the letter right there and they say, this is the letter. And uh, master, read it. Because I need this promotion. They are not afraid for that one. And when the union of their, the union of workers in their place of work, when they are meeting together and they are saying, oh, they must give us better conditions of service, they are there and they are talking. But when it comes to talking about Jesus Christ, then they can't talk anymore. When it comes to talking about what the Lord can do for these other people, they cannot talk again. They have received the call of God, but they are cowards. The papers are in their hand, the miracle and healing to distribute, but they are cowards. But you know, if you are a coward, when we get to heaven, if you get there, you will be carrying the bag of your fellow brother who was not a coward. Look at it. Here you are. A Christian, a worker. Here are other workers with you. And then we get to heaven. And then they call your fellow worker. The same as fellowship leaders who are. The same decision workers who are. The same area leaders who are. The same zona leaders who are. And then they put a crown on his head. They and stars upon the crown. Because of the reward of the faithful. And then they put him on the throne. And then uh, after that, uh, they say, You see down there, under, that, uh, under this man having crown. Then you will be ashamed. But you cannot come back to the world to say, I will be bold now for Jesus Christ. Uh -uh. Your generation has passed. You have served your generation in a careless way, in a lazy manner. But this coward said, we are not able. Verse 33, we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their side. That's the answer of the coward. In Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes. And went out into the midst of the city and cried with loud and bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. What happened here is that Haman. Already convinced the king that all the Jews in Shushan and in all in various other provinces they should be destroyed on a particular day. And Mordecai heard about that. Therefore, he was concerned. Now look up at me here. But there was only one person that Mordecai knew who could really help in this situation so that. The whole group of people who are Jews will not be destroyed. And that person was not an evangelist. 
was not a prophet that person was not a pastor that person was not an apostle was not a teacher was not even a man was just a woman called Esther and there are times like that when there is a special work that God has and you are the only person in your own area that can do that work for God the only person in that office that can lift up the banner of the gospel in your office the only person where you are living to be able to declare for Jesus Christ you are the only person the pastor cannot come there the pastor does not even know that place and yet it's a serious assignment that God has put in your hand now Esther was the only person that could do it at this time in verse 4 so Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told each her then was the queen exceedingly grieved, unhappy, and she sent Raymond to close Mordecai to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatach went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate the king's treasures for the Jews to destroy them and he also gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king and make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people Etash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Esther spake unto Etash and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces, they know, they do know, that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except to such, such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live, but I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. Now the call came to Esther. Mordecai said, Esther, this is your work. If you don't do it, all of the children of Israel, the Jews who are in this place, they can be destroyed. And uh, if that happens, you know the covenant given to Abraham and given to us as Israelites, everything will lose everything. Therefore, this is your chance. This is what to do. And uh, Esther said, what will I do now? This is a difficult assignment. Because the king has not sent for me. And if you go to this king and he didn't send for you, except you hold out the, uh, the golden scepter in his hand, you will, be, uh, you will be killed. So I'm sorry. I can't do it. The call is there, but this is a coward. Aren't you like that sometimes? Speak the word. You can't. Because you are a coward. You fear men more than you fear God. You fear a woman like yourself. That you are to tell the truth of the gospel. More than you fear God. Or you fear a man like yourself. Whom you are to counsel. And tell him the truth. In the wisdom of God. You fear him more than you fear God. You say well I cannot. Or it is your senior brother living with you at home. He just sees you carrying Bible, going to church every time. You cannot open your mouth and say, My brother, it's true, you are my senior brother. This life you are living, only God can make your life better. Let us go to church and say it with the power of God and with the wisdom of God. You cannot. A coward. Or there are even people in your own house fellowship that you are leading. You cannot open your mouth to talk to them about the life a believer should live. You leave it and set the example and then show them and tell them from the word of God. You cannot. You are afraid. Because uh, you have tried to tell the people the truth before and they went back gossiping about you. And because of the gossip now, you cannot tell the truth anymore. And you say you are a scholarship leader. This was a coward uh, Esther, a, a portion of a coward that she held. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot do it. And then look at the answer. They told Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, 
Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlightenment and deliverance arise unto the Jews from another place. God's work will be done. If you do it, God will give you a reward. If you say, I, I am sorry, I am afraid, I am not educated, I am only primary six, or I am a, not a manager in my place of work, I am only a secretary, or even though I am in IFL, uh, still uh, I don't have the courage, I don't have the uh, disposition within me to be able to do it. Okay, if you keep quiet, God is able to raise up stones. And they will praise the name of God. But then understand that the work you should have done, which God will have given you reward for, another person who is even more foolish than you are, that person will do it. And then you will be left empty handed. Look at what Esther was told. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. What a great judgment. Who knoweth whether thou art come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. After Mordecai challenges her saying, you are a coward. Like I'm telling you tonight. If you are not doing your responsibility, the work God has put in your hand as a zonal leader, if you are not doing it, you are a coward. You are running for Satan. You are saying, ah, I'll be careful though. Hmm. Because uh, that Satan is powerful. More powerful than your savior. Huh? You fear Satan. You wait for the savior. You wait for God. Say God do what you want to do. I, I prefer your judgment. Do what you can do to me. But I cannot face Satan. You fear witches and wizards. But you don't fear the judgment of God. And you say. Ah, that woman now. If I challenge her. About her evil ways. I don't know what she has. Maybe she is uh, in, in, in familiar spirit. Huh? Because she is in familiar spirit, you can't tell her that thus says the Lord, you are afraid. If you are afraid of them, that's the time they will catch you. You don't know that. It's when you are not afraid that they will not be able to catch you. It is when you are afraid of them, uh -huh, and they will know that is a coward. Look at me now. I mean, uh, which uh, familiar spirit can come and catch me? When they know I'm not afraid. When they know I'm not a coward. Which witch or wizard can come and catch me now? But when you are afraid and you say, I will not endanger my life. It is then your life is in danger. So uh, Esther was afraid. A coward. Then Mordecai said, okay, stay there. You and your father's house. You will be destroyed. But enlightenment and deliverance will come from another place. And then in verse 16. Esther said, Go, gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink. Uh, three days, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast. Likewise, so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish... I perish. Did she perish? No. no. But she became courageous. Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verse 57. It came to pass that as they went in in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said unto him, Foxes are false. The birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. We don't hear about the man anymore. Once Jesus said that, ah, he said, if that is so. He didn't wait for the other promise that they who forsake house or brethren or sisters will receive in this world a hundredfold. The little he had, he became afraid as a coward. He didn't follow anymore. In verse 59. He says unto another, follow me. But he says, Lord, suffer me, allow me, or permit me first to go and bury my father. Jesus says unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. 
There are many people who delay themselves, disturb themselves with ceremonies in the world. And they will not be able to do the work that God has committed into their hands. You are a zonal leader, or you are an area leader, a house fellowship leader, and then somebody died in your village. And you take permission for one month to go and eat and drink in your village. The house fellowship is there. Some of the members, when they didn't see you to lead them, some of them are going away. You are burying your father for one month. And you say, well, that's what they do in our village. They will do ceremony. They will do this one. They will do this one. Now, Jesus wasn't saying we should not bury our father when the father dies. Jesus wasn't saying that we shouldn't do the normal thing we ought to do, but to go away completely for weeks. And say that you are burying your father And the work of God is suffering Other people will say that uh, Because of GCE uh -uh. Ordinary GCE uh, that, uh, Even when it was difficult Those days There were many of us We were still uh, doing some other things When I was in uh, my white garment church I wasn't even a Christian GCE will take me away From Saturday night prayer because when I go there and I get there at 8 o'clock in the night like this Till around 5 o'clock I am still drumming You people who are sleeping, I'm preaching, you are sleeping at 11 o'clock You didn't go to Aladura church before <laughs> Because right from 8 o'clock like this We'll be drumming and sweating No break Except when the prophecy is coming out When prophecy is coming out you will sleep because the prophecy may say that your child is going to die. Why are you asking? <laughs> Everybody will be awake. At that time, studying for GC, I will be studying for GC. But when Saturday comes, I stop all those things and we go. From that 8 o'clock, I will begin to beat drum. I will not remember GC. <laughs> but God knew that I was sincere in my darkness. Because that was the best I knew. And yet, I passed that same GC at all, A level. Because he knew that I was sincere. Because as a sinner, I won't go to dancing hall. I won't go and be drinking somewhere at night because I wanted to prepare for my GC. But the GC will not disturb my fasting. Because Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I must fast. GC or no GC. That was the thing. It will not disturb my even ordinary day Waking up at I must pray at 9 o'clock I must pray at 12 o'clock And GC mathematics will go aside When time for prayer for my burning candle When it comes As a sinner And here you are you say you are born again And you can't even Ordinary Saturday workers meeting Which is not up to The one I was doing before From 8 till 5 in the morning You can't do it because of GC Ordinary fasting Fasting on only one Thursday In about three months that we announced You can't do it When I was a sinner I pity you people I was doing all these things Like this workers retreat Now maybe there are some of our workers who are not here At the convention Of those white garment people In a particular place We will remove our shoes at night We will put our candles in our hand and that if you put candle in your hand and the wax is a dropping on your on your hand, it will be burning you. You understand? Yes. But we who has time to be uh, to be holding candle and be doing like this? It will be on your hand and that is part of the religion. Who has time for when you are going on the road and that night and the, the, it was a bush where they had the convention, all this type of house. All the gold for a vow, for the vow they made last year, all the gold that everybody is pulling will be on the road and everybody will be there. And then we are also there with our candles, with our white garments, and then with bare feet. And then maybe nail came into your leg. Who has time to wait? When they are praying and they, when it is time to make another vow, you are waiting to remove a nail from your leg. Who has time for that? When I was a sinner. And here you are now, you are believers and you are so delicate. You can't, uh, you don't have the courage and the authority and say, now that I'm in the light, I will serve the Lord. So, you know, 
this person said, I want to go and bury my father. Other people, it's because of naming ceremony. They won't come for workers' meetings. The normal meetings they should attend, they can't attend. They are just like all the other people in the world, and yet they are workers. And it says in verse 61, And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me go first. Be them farewell, which are at, her, at, her, at home, at my house. Let me go and take permission. Jesus says unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. I believe that um, you will not be a coward. Amen. You will become courageous in Jesus' name. Amen. God has given us the call. Some people are cowards. Other people, they choose the better way. They have courage. Isaiah replied with courage. When God said, Who shall I send? And who shall go for us? Isaiah said, Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Now, look up here. On Monday, there are 24 hours. Quiet time, visitation, Bible study, all of that will not take up to four hours from you. Out of 24, this God who sent Jesus Christ to the earth to die for our sins, who suffered all that he suffered, and he says, ah, just the Monday Bible study, visit another person and bring him. All this will not cost you four hours. Of, of, of 24 hours and you give 8 hours to your place of work for bread and butter Tuesday there is no Bible study your quiet time your prayer and the zonal meeting you may have in the zone will not take maybe up to 3-4 hours from you out of 24 Wednesday may be a free day for you just you have your quiet time you pray then Thursday will not take more than four hours from you. Friday, maybe you are free, or maybe there is a zonal meeting, then we meet on Saturday, you go for visitation, carve out the time, make out the time. Then Sunday, Sunday uh, is the Lord's day. The whole thing is for the Lord. When I became a Christian, I was living in a particular town, then I will go to a church 15 miles away, before they introduced the kilometers. I will leave in the morning, then I will attend morning service 15 miles away after the morning service I will find a house to sleep in the afternoon because I must attend evening service I wait for the evening service then when they finish evening service after 8 in the night then we pray then 9 o'clock I am coming back every Sunday for many many years it took more than 14 hours from me because I would leave sometimes around 7 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes around 8 o'clock in the morning. Then once I go like that for morning uh, service, we finish morning service, I wait for evening service over there because I cannot come back home. I didn't have a car uh, for the 15 miles. To come back home and then go back again. I didn't have much money. I will stay there. When we finish, uh, maybe about 9 o'clock, I go to the uh, motor park. It may be 10 o'clock, I will see vehicle. Maybe 11 o'clock, I come back home. 14 hours, 15 hours will have gone. But that's all right because Sunday is totally for the Lord. Here you are. You are wo I wasn't a worker. I was just an ordinary believer. And I gave the whole day to the Lord like that. And here you are, worker. You all the service you attend just three hours, seven to ten, and then after that, uh, area leaders to counsel people and zona leaders you do some other things. Maybe you even go uh, back home, you eat, you rest. Then house fellowship in the evening, far far in the evening. You people are enjoying. You understand? Yes. So we should give our time to the Lord. The Lord is saying, "Who shall I send?" Who shall go for us? And you can say, as a courageous person, here am I, send me. Rise up and let us pray. It's time for prayer, not time for sleeping. Let's all rise up.